Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's Kimberly. I am the CEO of Drive Her. Welcome to today's podcast of the Drive Her Business Brews. Now, I want to give you all an update. The House has passed the bill that um, can lead and I believe will ultimately uh, facilitate the demise of TikTok in the United States of America. And I, I know the last video I did was on this subject matter. And you're probably saying, I don't care. It has nothing to do with me. I don't even like TikTok. I don't even use TikTok. But you don't understand how TikTok has totally shifted the culture. Entrepreneur, um, entrepreneurs, it has totally shifted how information is disseminated. Um, we're able to collectively get information that is not filtered through fake media, through fake news, okay, through the propaganda machine. And this is going to do a lot more harm than good. Now, you all know I've been critical of TikTok for um, for years. I was critical until I jumped on the bandwagon about two years ago. And I cannot tell you a lie. Though TikTok, it's, it is uh, very, it could be soul crushing in the essence of, I don't like what social media does to individuals in its entirety, okay? Uh, social media in, in in its entirety is it is bad. But I've met many of you all, a great people. Uh, I've become friends with a lot of you all. Uh, a lot of you all buy my products and take my classes. There's people I would have never met, things I would have never learned, spaces in my business I would have never ventured into if not for TikTok. I cannot, I I can't lie. I I just cannot. And I'm not pressed over it. Um, either way it goes, I've already been training you all to have other avenues for this because it's going to affect you. And for you all, it's like, well, I've been trying to build up my Instagram. I've been trying to build up my Facebook. I've been trying to build up my, um, no one used Snapchat really like that. But let's say you're trying to build your YouTube channel. You have to understand this now because of this action, this tightens their grip on you on so many different ways. See, TikTok was literally the, the black sheep. It was the redheaded stepchild, right? It was, it was that girl that was in on the team. And it's like, why are you here? You have to understand. And I've told you all, these platforms are deep in bed with the CIA, with, you know, um, legislation. This is why they can kick us off. This is why they can all, you know, they're all in bed with each other. This is why they have a certain way of doing things. But TikTok allowed a lot of us to step outside of that norm. The things I was, I cannot say on this platform, I could definitely say without a shot of a doubt, okay, on TikTok, 90% of the time, okay? And so, uh, right, Kev, this is, I told the last video I did was on digital warfare. And this is something that you have to pay attention to. The digital warfare actually started um, in 2020 when the 2020 election started, right? We started, I got banned. I had full um, full Instagram accounts with thousands of followers, 15,000 followers, totally banned, shut down, indefinite, okay? Because of my views on the jab, because of my views on the presidential election, because of me being a conservative or in the conservative space and being very vocal as an African-American voting for Trump. They didn't want that. On this, on this channel in itself, I can't tell you how many views, whether I was demonetized for eight months at a time, six months at a time, I literally would have my account shut down for 30 days, 14 days, two weeks, you know, seven days. I was going through these things where we was talking about all the things literally that has been, I've been literally proven right. Things that we were speaking about literally declared as, hmm, yeah, you was right, my bad, but we don't get compensated for that. And so this is going to even affect a lot of you all because they're going to say, don't come over here trying to do that thing. Don't come over here thinking you're going to talk because now we can really flex on you. So they, the only reason why they pull back the grip and the handles on Instagram and YouTube is because they knew a lot of us would just go over to TikTok and say what we need to say. That's it. And so what they did, it was like, look, we, we're going to end up chewing off our own arm. But I'm going to tell you, this digital warfare is going to backfire badly. 
And it's going to backfire in a way that so many of us are just going to say, we wash our hands of it at all. I think YouTube Facebook, Meta, Instagram. I think a lot of these other platforms have been playing, you know, let's bend over. Okay. If you know what I mean by the U S government, let's appeal. You scratch my back. I scratch your back. They having their own little ditty parties. Okay. Um, those platforms, you just fill in who they are in the blank. I think they think it's going to, everyone's going to flock over. People will flock. I've already seen it. People will flock, but I will tell you this. They will get more of a regression than a progression. Okay. They will get more of a regression than a progression. Right. The reason being is because we're done. We will formulate our own avenues. We will do, we, we will have meetup parties. We will have truthing parties because as much as TikTok is, it, it can be very annoying and it can be a cesspool at times, but it's how you curate your information. Most of that stuff, y'all, what I've been doing on my burner phone, I'm downloading all the stuff because we always save it. I've been going in my saves and everything that's of a resource, guess what I'm doing? I'm putting it on my hard drive. I'm putting it on a backup that because this is information, but let's just, and I don't, excuse me how I say this. How long have I been telling you all social media platforms are going to go away? I was saying this when it was unpopular. I was telling you all this when no one else was really even saying it. I remember specifically saying that. And I'm talking about this is going on four or five years. I said information is going to become so invaluable. One of the things I've been doing, I've been purchasing books, um, any kind of book, old publications. So if it's an old book, I don't get the revised um, versions, nor do I get, if, if it's still in print, I don't get the new publications. I'm getting old, decrepit books off of eBay. eBay has become my, I've been, I bid on books. I got this one book that some, t some people were selling it um the newer updated models and it's all nice and pristine up in the hundreds of dollars i bid it on this one book for one dollar no one else bid it on it and i got the book and free shipping okay so i have already been building my arsenal i've been already doing these things and what's so sad is so many people are so caught up and you <laughs> And I don't want to, I'm trying to really show some grace here because I do get it. You have people who've never been able to generate income like this. What the money that's being made on, I, now I, no, I ain't even going to hold you. I like TikTok shop. I just bought two things off of it right now. <laughs> okay. Right now. I just bought two things off of it. I find products I would never have found on Amazon. And it's a lot of products. I would say that doesn't even accommodate me locally. OK, and I love supporting small businesses. I'm a small business. I love I love it. I love bragging on people's products. I like shit. Y'all know I come on here. I'm going to share with you. I got my butcher box yesterday. I got a video to show y'all with that. My butcher box, I, they you know, it's um the Passover. They like to say Easter, but they always sell the um, corned beef brisket in March. So I loaded up on. <laughs> I got three corned beef briskets. I got three um, beef briskets and I got six steaks. I did all beef. I, uh, I don't get that stuff locally as good, right? Like the steaks, I'm like, mm, I'd rather go with butcher box and butcher box steaks be hitting if y'all know what I mean. So I did a whole beef box and um, wanted my corned beef because it's much. And y'all know I'm originally from Boston and I have an Irish last name. My grandfather's Irish. So that's why my last name's Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, I like to say it's in my, it's in my jeans, right? So I love my corned beef brisket. Um, but I'm going to share those things and they are trying to tighten the grip. Even some of these businesses saying, oh, we'll just buy TikTok. We'll just, Mr. Wonderful talking about, I'll just buy one um, TikTok. No, you're not. TikTok is not even for sale. This is literally digital imperialism. You know, imperialism is what the Roman government did. We live in imperialism right now. We're the United States. We're not a democratic nation. I don't know why people think that this is imperialism and it's been imperialism, you know, just fashion and curated psychologically and augmented to make you think that this is a democratic society. This is not a democratic society. Okay. 
So what they're trying to do is funnel so many people. So many. Oh, you got your butcher box too? Yeah, I got my butcher box yesterday. <laughs> I love their meat. So they're trying to funnel us all in so that we're only buying from Amazon. We're only doing our businesses and building our, our communities on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube. Right. That's what they're trying to do. This is why I kept telling you all, how long have I been saying less is more? I watch a lady. I really like her. She's a black lady in the conservative space. She's been really, she blows up a lot. She does a lot of cussing, but I, 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 she's been, she's been doing really good. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. This, it broke my heart. I seen a video and I have it. I, don't, I was going to play it, but I want to I wanna keep her dignity, even though she put it out there. She was crying because TikTok changed their payout rules. And the payout, she was, the, she was crying about how she pays her rent with her TikTok money. And she was expecting to get like $2,000 or something like that. But they're like holding, they're holding some of the money. So she's only getting $500. I'm going to tell y'all something. And this is, this is why y'all notice how you always ask, you know, a lot of my people say, Kim, can you go back to teaching some of your social media classes? Can you do this? Can you do that? And I don't like it. And this is why I don't like it. I don't like it because too many of you all will get addicted. Just like people in the gig economy, just like strippers, just like side hustlers, you get addicted to the revenue that is generated off these platforms. These platforms are so volatile and it can change. It can change. You can let, you have to understand there was a point in time on YouTube. I literally was cashing out three to $6,000 checks a month in my account, three to six. Let me tell you something I didn't stop doing though. I didn't, I did not quit my day job, baby. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I kept running my businesses. I kept driving for Uber because I still wanted my supplemental income. I developed content and I focused on developing my email list and I focused in developing consumer relationships, right? And my mouth is so reckless at that time. Anyways, how I talk about the government and doctors and the medical system and the water supply, you name it. I was the, the proverbial tinfoil hat chick. Trust me, I it was no love loss. It was no love lost. You know, it's a it, we, it's a hit it and quit it. Well, I don't know. I might not wake up with TikTok. Uh, and, I mean, um, YouTube in the bed in the morning. Okay, but I, I I fashioned my mind like that. The problem is people look at these avenues like it is a. It, it's it, you going to do this for the rest of your life? This is exhausting. Social media is exhausting. I'm gonna tell you right now. I can prove it to you. I literally can, I could do the whole month of April. I could show you the numbers. I know how to do it. I know how to teach you how to do it. But do you want to lose your soul in the process? There is something so, so grinching, so, so wrenching, I'm sorry, about doing social media. This is why I've always trained my people. Please get, I'd rather you have 500 solid. I'd rather you have 500 day ones. The minute, one thing I have about my people, I have such a solid group of people. Now I put out a lot of products. I sell a lot of things in just in one of my companies. Mind you, I got five. Just in one of my companies, CEO Drive Her does me well. I don't have to create consumer fatigue with my people. My people know I'm about to go on sabbatical. So I do all my lessons and stuff now, and then I'll sell the replays while I'm on sabbatical. But my, I, I have a way, a nature of, you know what, like I just did a coupon where they get, what was it? 30% off on the coloring book class that's coming up. That's my way of continuing that relationship. I don't want to con have consumer fatigue. You all want people to consume your content day in and day out. Y'all, trust me, God has given me a great mouth. I can, I can talk, okay? But me being a powerful talker, me being able to communicate effectively with you all, it, that is more co codependent on my alone time and my shut up time. For me to talk the way that I talk and I have clarity and purpose within everything that I say, I have to spend time in solitude. So me getting on here, this is why I I'm telling you, I don't care what people say. You be like, oh, that person working hard. They always got a video. They always doing this. That might be for a season, but that's not natural. It's not natural, you all. And I would not convince any of you all to do that. 
my entrepreneurs. So this TikTok ban is bittersweet. Um, it passes this, the house is, it's definitely, I believe going to pass the Senate. Now the Senate majority, I want to, is Republican. Um, you, this is an election season. Understand the dynamics. I could literally, y'all, there's so many dynamics at play right now. I'm talking about this ties into the unemployment numbers. They need higher unemployment numbers. They need you all with USB. I'm sorry, UBI. This is why y'all crying on social media. When you cry, I'm, I'm demonetized. You have channels on here that's got millions of viewers and million, millions of subscribers, and they're demonetized. They still have to keep content. They still have to do the sensationalism, all right? Because this is their bread and butter. They they depend on your cash apps. They depend on you um, sending them money. You know what's that money? What's the money that super chats? They depend. They're codependent on super chats. They're codependent on the PayPal link. They're codependent on the merch. Them selling merch. And my thing is, y'all, stop spending your money where you're not getting good value. Some, a lot of you all are addicted to consumption. You want to consume information. We have more than enough information. And what's sad is a lot of the information is for free, but you don't want to even sit down and structure the information. You're going to have to count your ducats. You're going to have to count your pennies. Stop. You, t money is co correlated in two ways, okay? Time and in physical currency. Okay. So you have to understand that your time, I know we don't like to say it, <laughs> you know, it's a catch 22 time is money, but it is y'all. It really is. The, you know, that's why if I get on here and I talk to you all for two hours, I've told you all, please break it up. This is why I come on here only two times a week. You know, I don't, I literally feel guilty. Just as a woman of God, I feel guilty. We, you know, we need to spend more time in our word. We need to spend more time in solitude. We need to spend more time executing what we need to execute within our businesses and our families and in our communities and fortify that. But if we're on, if we're allowing our time to be filled with social media, what else are we doing? But back to the TikTok ban. Um, a lot of people are crying, literally big grown folks, 60 year olds, 25 year olds, 30 year olds, 40 year olds are literally crying and panicking about this ban on TikTok. Okay. The ban you all, I don't think you understand how much money these people are going to lose, how the unemployment rate will skyrocket, how they will now get their numbers for, you know, how ADP run the numbers and what have you with payroll, but how this will now push you all into depleting your um, expendable cash. I hope you're doing your cash stuffers. I hope you're doing your cash saving. Okay. It's really going to set you up right. I'm telling you now, this will take a little while to play out. Um, this, uh, they will have six months, I think six months of existence. I don't see I don't see China, because remember, TikTok, from my understanding, is governed by the CCP. I don't see China bowing to America. I don't see them. Do, I don't see them selling their company to America. I do see a counter attack, though. See, you have to again, we're in a digital warfare, but see, we 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 have a, a, a war machine a pig headed war machine that loves war. This is what I'm telling you. There are so many layers to this TikTok ban. They had no problem with them. Chinese spy balloons coming across flying, literally flying across the United States. How many thousands of miles is that? And multiple spy balloons. They didn't even shoot it down. Okay. But they want to ban TikTok. Mm, okay. Let's make, let's make sense of this. Mind you, the same government and the same corporations that want to ban TikTok is the same government and the same corporations that the majority, if not 90% of their work products are outsourced. 90% is stretched, maybe 70. Let's say 70% of the work, of the hiring, of the products created is outsourced to China. Let's make this make like let's look, come on, let's do some 5D chess here. All right. 
This is some critical thinking. This is how you allow yourself to understand what's really being at, what's really at play. They want some smoke with China. They, the military industrial complex need another war. We didn't, we're not buying the Ukraine, that yellow and blue flag. We ain't, it's like, I right, whatever. I don't even like them colors right now. Yellow's one of my favorites. We, we definitely, Israel and the Gaza Strip, we ain't buying that propaganda war machine. Didn't work. Didn't work. Didn't work. You got people to this day, and even Atlanta, they stand in traffic talking about free Palestine, okay? Didn't work. What will work? What will work is a war with China. China already can attack us with an EMP. We can make, they're going to try to use them to say China is disgruntled because we put a ban on their, on their platform. So now they're digitally attacking us. Told you this is a digital warfare. We get another, I just seen that someone in New Mexico literally died from the bubonic plague. What in the hell? The bubonic plague. Who conjured up that demon? Y'all, these are plagues that we read about in our history books. Pestilence in our history books. And people in the United States are dying from the bubonic plague. Okay. All right. All right. So remember, we had what Trump called it the China. <laughs> it comes from China. All right. We had COVID. All right. The whole Wuhan debacle. And it got blamed on China. But we know they was doing gain of function in China. And that was admitted. And, fun and, and, and Fauci was part of that. So that's not, uh, that's not fake news. So they're going to, they need a bad person. We ain't buying it with, with Russia. What we seen the Tucker Carlson interview with v Vladimir Putin. All right. Right. We seen that. We see we're seeing videos of what's going on in Russia. Russia is thriving. Their dollar is stronger than the United States dollar. It is stronger than the Dixie. It is stronger than them greenbacks. Okay. It is stronger than them dead presidents. And they're just a doo 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 through their streets in Russia. You see the propaganda war machine. You see what's going on. And we see a lot of this through what? TikTok. So the ban, not only that, so mind you, 90% of our pharmaceuticals come from China. Most of our products, resources are outsourced. Even computer chips and chips for our um, vehicles are outsourced through who? China. And now you want to shut down TikTok. And TikTok is a really, really big platform for them. Now, I don't like a lot of their practices. I'm not defending TikTok whatsoever. I don't have no dog in this fight. But I'm going to be fair and just, and I'm going to be unbiased. We're going to be level-headed around about this, right? So... It, the, it passed today. So you can see, if you could go online live, it just passed. The House passed to ban TikTok in the United States. It's going to the Senate. Um, these politicians, remember, they're governed and ruled by lobbyists, all right, and by corporations. And so they, they are not beholden to their constituents, which are us that put them there in, in D.C., but they're beholden to the lobbyists. Okay. They're beholden to them, not us. So they're going to get those corporate dollars. They, I, even the Republicans, I think I will be very, I will be very surprised if the Republicans do not ban TikTok. This is the one thing that the Republicans, the Republicans and the Democrats, anytime the Republicans and Democrats at this point can agree on something, you already know it's trash. You already know the gig is up. They in it. OK, so when it comes to war, if it's if it comes to sending Ukraine money, if it comes to sending Jeru um, Israel money, no problem. If it comes to they can agree, agree on shutting down TikTok, no problem. Why? Because they know we get real information in real time about their crooked selves. Look at what just happened to the Boeing guy, the guy that was just going through the trial. He's ratting on Boeing. I, I won't even fly right now. It's like, nah. OK. Um, anyone in aviation, the stuff I've been hearing about Boeing is, it's crazy. All right. And they got parts are just falling off while people, I don't know, 14,000, you know, um, miles up in the sky and parts are just falling off. Wheels are falling off. The doors falling off. All these things, the mass, like they said, 30% of the mass don't even work th that fall down. All these different things. 
You know what? And I did see that. That's who I said that earlier. Kevin, the, AKA Mr. Wonderful. Kevin O'Leary is Mr. Wonderful. So Mr. Wonderful said he'll buy TikTok. TikTok's not even for sale. TikTok is not for sale. This is imperialism. This is, is a this is a corporate takeover. There, you can't you can't say, yeah, you can't bully a company. And this is why we have to be. I don't care where you're out on the playing field, you all. You cannot uh, you cannot allow this to happen because if we allow this for them to do this to China, they're gonna start doing this to us. They already started doing this to us. So Kevin O'Leary need to take his sh and shut his little lying fat trap up. All right, and his corruptions and all his different stuff. You know, I I don't like Kevin O'Leary. I used to try to give him the benefit of the doubt, but I don't like him. The fact that he jumps, he's he want to jump in all cocky and like I'll just buy it. I'll just buy TikTok. They could just give it to me. And he says, I'll keep, I'll, I'll keep 30% of the Chinese on board, but let me, this is a good, we don't want your rules. The whole thing about TikTok, we don't want your rules. We don't want your regulations. We don't want to be censored. We want to be able to say what we want to say. We want, it's the irony that TikTok will allow you, even though in Taiwan and in China, you cannot, you, there is no first amendment rights. There is no freedom of speech, but yet, and still we have a greater degree of freedom, of freedom of speech, right. On that platform, the irony, <laughs> the irony, the stuff that is disclosed, you have to understand. I remember it was really hard. And this is why I feel bad for some people, because when I was really into the social media thing years back, I would be in tears. I would be in tears because I know I'm giving good content. I know I'm giving great information. I know I'm guiding people the right way. But my my content is being intentionally suppressed. OK intentionally suppressed that is there's something about your voice being taken away it's likened unto you know being essayed all right and i know that's a bit of a stretch but you feel basically you feel powerless and this is an assault on our first amendment rights this is an assault on everything that we do. Let, let me tell you something i have a tiktok shop ain't put nothing on it i have what 54 50 55,000 followers um, I have almost 500,000 likes. I've always been very good on it. Now for the past three or four months, I don't even post on there. I don't, I don't post on there. Um, I will repost some of my old content, but something told me to take a step back because what happens is social media sucks you in. You have to, under, and I, how many times I've taught you, any of you all that took some of my old social media classes, I always tell you, you think you're the business, but understand on these platforms, you're the product. You are the product. And this is a casting call. And a lot of people get screwed in the ca casting call on the casting couch. Read in between the lines. You know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about when I say casting couch. And some people in this place, right? Some people in this space have no problem selling their soul in a way where they are nothing but nuts and fools on the platform because they bent over on the casting couch. This thing will rip rip you rip your integrity. The things that people do the as 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 trans, I'm all for being transparent and candid but y'all the oversharing has to stop. People literally are making social media accounts all for their children. Their children is put in front of a camera 24 seven. They're recording. There's one, there's one couple that have a camera in every area of their house. And it just streamlines what they're doing every day from their bathroom to their bedroom, when they're sleeping at night to their kitchen. This is sick. So I'm hoping that this ban awakens not only just who we are as individuals and as consumers of social media, but also on the corporate level and these corporate pigs that want to gaslight and funnel you into only three primary platforms. And have you fighting with each other for attention? Have you working like a slave, making all kind of content and editing? I'm not editing no videos. If I can't automatically edit or if I can't edit it within 10 minutes, this is why I do a lot of lives. Between the shorts and the lives, I'm look, I don't care enough to give YouTube, TikTok, um, Facebook, 
I'm not even on there, but or Instagram that much care. I don't. Some things are very precious to me. What? So someone could come and steal it or they can come and they monetize and they make a whole bunch of money. Hey, you want they literally offer me every other day on on um Instagram. Hey, you want more faces to see it? Nope. Whoever see it, see it. Whoever see it, see it. All right. I'm not, we have to value tangibility. We got to go back to this, you all. We have to go back to this because this war, when I can go on social media and people, grown men and women are crying because of an app that's going to get shut down. And that app was, they was codependent on that for their livelihood. I'm going to tell you this. Yes, we have a broken system, but you all have a broken mindset. You should never, something that you do not own, you don't own it. You don't own it. You don't own the intellectual properties of your social media content. You don't own it. And this is why I'm all, you know, I've always been in the space of compliance, being in the space of uh, protecting what it is that you have, understanding trademarking, copywriting. You wouldn't be so, you wouldn't be so keen to putting things out just all willy nilly. Okay. This is why I always, I'm always, what do, what do I have you all do all the time? I have a bunch of my students in here right now. I have you making products. I said, I don't care if one person buy it. You don't know in 20 years, that thing may be very relevant. I had a class. What was the name of that class y'all that I just did? It was, what was it? GPT. Oh my goodness. I forget the name of it because I, I, I teach so many, but basically I was showing people how to refurbish old products, even your college papers. I'm showing you how you can refurbish college papers, um, scripts that you wrote, music that you wrote, even concepts and ideas, journals. You can literally scan this information into a GPT, compile it and have it disseminate 20 to 30 products for you. Okay. What we have in a class on tonight, I'm teaching, what is it? The website class, right? On um, the Canva. We're doing easy peasy Canva creation, you know, no tech stress. I'm showing people how you can take control of these things. If you are on TikTok, I was like this. One thing I would not have done is not even have my own platform where I had, and I'm not collecting emails. I'm not collecting emails. I'm not collecting addresses. I'm not collecting information. Not we don't abuse those things. But what we do is, if the let's say the minute tick, let, let me put it to you like this: the minute TikTok shop um, shuts down, here's my question: Could you, how would you get in contact with all those people that bought something from your TikTok shop? If you're making money through streams on TikTok shop and people watching your content, and it gets shut down. How do you now convert those people? You can't. You can't. Why? Because it's locked in their system. They own it. Remember, you're the product. You're the product that they're giving a commission off of your own work. Yeah, the coloring book class, that is on the 21st. That's going to be a lot of fun. It's good. And let me tell you something. I told y'all, remember that video I did about two weeks ago? I said, y'all going to have a lot of um, free time and me time. I wasn't just saying that. I wasn't just saying that. I'm not, this is, this is a very, this is going to be an, 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 uh, a very tense year in certain retrospects. Look at what just happened with Bitcoin. Look at what just happened with Bitcoin. Let me see where, um, let me see where it's at. It hit an all-time high of 72,000, right? So Bitcoin right now, ah, it's at 73,233. And y'all, when I seen it hit this high, I was very, I was in the content behind it. And even some of the responses I got from you all in the community when I posted it. And I said, we've not learned nan lesson. OK. We've not learned nan lesson from the COVID years. You clowns are still out here jumping up and down for Dogecoin. 
You're jumping up and down for Bitcoin. Let me tell you something. I own, y'all don't want to know how much XRP, XLM, and XDC I own. You don't even, you will be like, what? You don't even want to know how much I own. Let me tell you something. I did not budge nam bit. I'm not selling. I'm not buying. I am sitting. See, one thing about wisdom and one thing about having a keen ear and not being moved by your emotions and definitely not being moved by the market. It has set you, it will set you apart from anyone else. I'm not trying to make it just because it's a pump. I'm trying to make a return and sell. Let me tell you what's going on. Just like with the TikTok and all this stuff that's getting in the way, Bitcoin is one of the biggest, um, it's one of the biggest Trojan horses. And I, I, I always say that, but it is one of the biggest Trojan horses that's going to lead you all down a road of destruction. You don't even realize how they're using it, how they're setting it up. Everyone's now getting re-excited, but they're getting you re-excited so that you will accept UBI, universal basic income. The playbook is being set, y'all. They're going to corrupt, collapse the dollar as much as possible. And you know how many people, when the TikTok ban comes, when the um, when the financial collapse come and the banks, you know, the bank runs happen or the bail-ins happen and all this stuff, you know, the crescendo of all it all, all of it, it hits, right? When it when it hits that crescendo, a lot of these people are going to be the main ones willing to bow to the beast system. Why? Because they did not, they did not set up any parameters. They didn't have a contingency plan and they didn't do anything to be able to be in a position where they could say no and not bow to the king. Bitcoin right now, you got Jamie Dimon. You got, um, what's the other one? Oh my goodness. He's JP Morgan Chase, but you got Jamie Dimon. You got, um, Ray Dalio. You got a number of these people, all of a sudden, they're, they're saying, oh, we we was wrong. We was wrong about Bitcoin. We was wrong about the collapse. Oh, we was wrong about recession. This is great. It's great. This is a time. Y'all, they got all these houses that are owned by corporations and hedge funds that you can't even buy. The only thing you can do is lease them. They got you trapped. And one of the things we have been saying for years is you're going to have to have a, it, the mindset. I know people like to say, oh, it's about mindset. It's about mindset. It really is about mindset. Because if your mindset and your, your, your spiritual life is not structured, your mental life is not well, I'm going to tell you what they're about to do and how they're going to hit. It will take the majority of people out because you're going to be, you're just going to have mental fatigue. You're going to have spiritual fatigue. And you want to be in a position, um, Julia just says, I hope their plan fail. I'm going to tell you right now, their plan is going to fail, but it's going to come at a cost. Everyone's going to get hit. Everyone's going to get touched. So even if they plan fail, there still need, we still have to have contingency plans. I do not think these, I think these corporate pigs have, have chewed their arm off so much. They're, they've become um, beyond uh, um, cannibalic. They're cannibals at this time. They're literally eating off of their self. They're li literally eating off of their own source to the point where there's going to be nothing left to consume but the major organs. And they're going to look up and it's going to be done, right? Um, look at what just happened with the Kellogg's dude. Well, this girl had a good um, analogy. I, I think she's right. Um, in this day of CGI and what have you, we, I believe in some other things that's going on. I can't even talk about it on here. Um, you are, you know, I've been saying for the longest time, we have two presidents and I still believe that um, we have two presidents. I'm not going to change that right now. I believe Trump has still been in, um, in office as well as the puppet in chief. All right. That, you know, thing that's up in there. And I believe America has been in a silent war that a lot of people do not understand. I can't, I can't even explain it to you. Um, this is not the first time in our nation that we've had two presidents. Um, it was even prophesied that Trump would serve three terms. And so, and I believe that, you know, uh, we all could be wrong, but it, it is what it is. And I believe this was a stealth mode term. Um, and because of the, there's a war over America right now.
and we really need to be prayerful and hopeful. But understand, um, you know, I've been in the book of Ezra and I've been in the book of Nehemiah. And I, y'all know, I always talk about Nehemiah, but I went into Ezra and I didn't realize um, Ezra and Nehemiah work succinctly together, right? And this is when they're coming out of Babylon. They're coming out of Babylon and they're going into Jerusalem, right? They're going into Israel. They're going into, you know, um, their, their, their destined land. Uh, but they had to build the wall. And we don't realize that a lot of times we're taken out of a space and for a time and season, and then we have to go back to our land. We have to go back. And I'm figuratively speaking, right? But it may be desolate. They may not be, there may not be any walls. Um, we need to know how to work together and how to rebuild. You know, um, I don't think it's by chance that Biden's campaign was build back better, right? Um, why? Because he tore it down. Okay. And so I did watch it, Janae. I did. Um, so one of the, a matter of fact, speaking of which, the a part of Nehemiah that where I cried because I physically seen it. One thing Nehemiah said, um, all the people were scattered, right? So they built the wall in 52 days and all the Jews were scattered, right? And the only thing he had left to go back to was the scrolls. And he, the, the Bible says he went to the books and he went back and he started going to the records of the generation. Let me tell you something. We don't even have, we don't even have our documentation and things in place in a way that if we need it to rebuild, we can rebuild. Can you rebuild? If your business collapsed, can you rebuild it? If your finances collapsed, can you rebuild it? If what, I mean, we are really, we've lost sight because we're so caught up in, so. what time is it? We're so caught up in social media. We're so caught up in what they're supposed to be doing for us that we're not doing for ourselves. Last night I ordered the uh, my knock box, right, which is a next of kin box, the fireproof one. And I was like, I'm really taking this to a whole nother level, right? Um, I didn't consider myself as someone that that'll be living off grid, that will be all this. But the more and more I study and I read and the books that I'm buying and um and the people that I'm watching, when it comes to sustainability, sustainability is a mindset. It's not about just saying F you to the government. It's about really being self-sufficient, knowing how to use your hands and feet, knowing how to literally trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding in all our ways, acknowledge him and allowing him to direct our path. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. We have to be able to do that. We have to uh, allow God to truly be our Jehovah not Nisi. Which is to me, which means to be our banner, to be our coverer, to be our protector, Jehovah Jireh, to be our provider. And th- it's scary because we are so codependent on the the ingredients at the store, what's in the box. So is it FDA approved? At this point, why would you even? I get it, but I don't get it. They're the main ones poisoning us with different colored dyes that are messing up our endocrine system, uh, messing up people's fertility system, messing up, uh, get, causing men to have erectile dysfunction. All these different things are happening. And I know it may seem overwhelming, but it's not overwhelming when you allow it to sit and digest. I'm not saying you got to know everything. You need to know some things, but build your community of people. Maybe this person specializes in this and this person is knowledgeable in this. It's not about screw these network groups. When I, when I do a meetup, I'm seriously, we, we need to be meeting up in the backside of a desert, on the backside of some woods. We need to be in the forest somewhere, and I don't need to see no SUVs and all this stuff. I don't need to see. No, no, no. We, we want some dirty boots. We need some jeans. We need some T-shirts, and we're going to get to work. Libby, I ain't even, listen, I can't stand Bitcoin, but I ain't, let me put that on the screen. Libby says, well, since Bitcoin is up, let me walk away with some of that profit. Let me tell you something. Now, I ain't going to hold you. I ain't even going to hold you, Libby. Get your money. And I'm going to be honest. I And I look, I don't give financial advice, but I'm going to tell you this right now. Because of the rug that's going to get pulled, in my humble opinion, 
if I know I had some Bitcoin and it was tracking like it's tracking, I'll dump it too. I, I would dump it. I'll probably keep a little of it. I, would, I definitely wouldn't buy no more. But I'll keep a little of it, but I'll dump it and let the fools buy it. I mean, hey, this this is business, right? Hey, don't hate the player, hate the game. I ain't mad at you. Uh, to be honest, it's hard to build community black because we have spiritual individualism. Um, yes and no. I'm going to tell you, let me tell you this. I have found, I have found that there are a lot more of us that are of a collective mindset and can be united. Um, the problem is a lot of times we all don't have the aesthetic that we think we all should have to be in a group. You know, black people are very, um, <laughs> we make judgments of people in a, in a very peculiar way. Right. It's almost likened to like, oh, you don't wear coach or you don't wear Jordans or you don't do. We have we have a lot of contradictory rules when engaging with other people. It's weird. Trust me. I was in Atlanta a long time. I know this to be factual. It's sad. And it's, you know, but I think a lot of times we think as a community, it needs to be a ton of us. And really, it just needs to be about three to five of us. It don't have to be a whole lot of people. And a lot of things can be outsourced. It can be outsourced. It doesn't have to be in your direct proximity, if that makes sense. Um, I was hoping to catch your class tonight, but I missed it. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. I will be selling the replay. Um, let him watch and we go back to the <laughs> Right. Um, just going through some of the conversations. Um, last year, I went to, to um, a convention here in Southern California, and a realtor was talking about the transfer mortgage payments from cash and Bitcoin. Scary. I believe that also, Kim. Let me tell you something. That Bitcoin is the Trojan horse that's going to lead a lot of people into UBI and it's going to um, to the uh, I'm sorry, the central bank digital CBDC, the central bank digital currency. So they got to make you think it's going to win. And so when a lot of people take this hit, they're going to say, listen, no problem, no problem. We're going to come in. Remember, this is an election year. So um, and, and don't be surprised if they roll out Michelle Obama. I promise. I, 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 I think there's a 90 percent chance by May. May or June, um, they're going to roll out Michelle Obama to take Biden's place. Biden would definitely be replaced. Y'all know I've been saying that for a while. In the spaces that I'm in, we've already seen the writing on the wall. They were saying this about two years ago. If you go into the store, you notice you see Michelle Obama on all the magazines all of a sudden. I Next time you go to the store, I want you all to check that out. I am not telling no tales. Go to the supermarket. Go down the magazine aisle. The check, more so just the checkout aisle you will see a bunch of magazines with Michelle Obama on it. Now, when on this planet, m mind you, they have not, you had four years of Trump and we've had four years of Biden. Why on earth would Michelle Obama be on the front of these pages? Why? Why? No first lady. We don't, we, we, you, we seen Nancy Reagan when she was about to die. OK, we seen Barbara Bush every once in a while. They'll, they go and they sit in the corner somewhere. Um, we seen um, Jackie Kennedy. Jackie Kennedy was in. She was one of my favorites. I just love me some. She was so regal. Um, Jackie Kennedy. Right. Uh, think of all the first ladies. You don't even see Trump's Melania Trump is not on anything. OK. And she does a lot in the fashion industry. But here it is. Michelle Obama has been being rolled out, rolled out. And what happened, y'all have to understand, this is what a psyop, or this is what, how they start to psychologically start to, on a subconscious level, start preparing you. She's giving talks and releasing books. She's been doing this for some time now. Biden, if y'all think Biden's going to really get across that finish line, okay. <laughs> He's decrepit. I don't think anyone would deny that. Okay. So what we have to do, what we have to do is we have to say, all right, we see the play at hand. We see what they're doing. 
Now, how are they going to frame it for her to come in and to be the savior? And it's going to cause such dis people going to be so disoriented and so disheveled in this process that they'll probably just fall for it. And, and what's so sad is a lot of times they see how you all react and see how people were so reactionary to the whole crypto space jumping up. Um, Kim Michelle said um, she's not running. Okay. The, we're dealing with high level. Um, Trump said he wasn't going to run and he ended up running 20 years later. Just because they no, unless unless they can frame it in a way that the people need this, there's no one else better. They definitely ain't gonna get Gavin Newsom. We're not gonna. We're, no one's. We're not doing no Gavin Newsom. But Michelle Obama, they may be able to get that. Why? Because they're gonna want to get the feminists. They want to get black women because black women are the highest Democratic voters. Okay, and they're gonna want to get people of color. Um, they're gonna get white suburban women who tend to be um, really good proponents of that. So yeah, what is she supposed to do? The Clintons and the Obamas need to go. Away. <laughs> yeah, she's. It's again. It's about. Listen, they don't control. If she gets in office, she's not controlling anything. It's the. It's really the the Soros and the people that's behind them. Okay. It's those, but a lot of those people, um, like the Rothschild, I just die. A lot of those, those, um, those high ranking societies that are controlling and have been controlling um, this imperialistic uh, government or nation called the United States. Um, it's 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 been under demise. Um, I'm in some forums and in some places where I know this to be factual. So uh, yeah. It's a cold war going on. <clears throat> Where we at? So it's funny you said that. I am. I actually found and dusted off my iPod iPod case, trying to see if I could buy more other MP3 players. We got to go back to low tech. Let me tell you something. Quantum mania. Let me tell you something. I've been telling my people this for the longest time. Yesterday, I almost bought a hundred. It was a bunch of CDs. I'm going on eBay trying to find a CD, a CD burner, right? And I just bought a CD player. So I'm trying to get a CD burner, okay? I want a CD burner and um, what is it? A CD burner, um, the landline. I was looking at phones at Staples yesterday, okay? And I'm researching which ones would be best. I'm talking about the old handheld phones. I told my people, if I, you want to low, you want to make some money, y'all, you need to be, get with a vendor. Um, some of you, are, a bunch of y'all signed up. Matter, matter of fact, I have a class on that, on the, let me see, it's in April. What is it? What day is it? It's on the 7th. Um, the white label and pri private label class. Um, and I go over with vendors. You want to buy thumb drives? You can buy them in the thousands and sell them here. People are going to be scrambling for these things. So I'm telling you right now, thumb drives, MP3 players, CDs, CD burners. Um, I have a, I have my iPad. I don't have, I used to have an iPod. Don't know where on earth it is. Um, but I would like to, I think the MP3s would be better. Um, I, I don't think Apple even support iPods anymore, but everything going offline, Offline, y'all, I'm telling you, it's going to be huge because people, if this TikTok ban continues, we're going to see a massive revolt, a massive, massive revolt like you've never seen before. And we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to say, screw you. Fine. No problem. Fine. We're going to have meetups. We're going to, we're going to get out of this, this, um, social media imperialism that they have. They've created a monopoly. They've created a monopoly. But remember, I told you a lot of these social media platforms are going to get broken up. I actually have that. Um, I've, that was about four years ago. Four, yeah, about four years ago. And I was like, these these platforms are going to get broken up. Um, a lot of them are going to get bought and they're going to get um, broken up into other smaller ones. Um, if you are a truther, I definitely suggest you be on Rumble or True Social. I'm on True Social, okay? Um, I, I set up a True Social account the time the day Trump released it. Um, now it's not gonna it, it's not gonna appease you where you want to interact on a daily basis, but it's it's enough. Um, you don't get too caught up in the stuff, right? But that's how social, excuse me. 
That's how social media should be. It shouldn't take up your entire day. All right. Um, let me see some of these other. Um, how do I enroll and make sure that I'm being notified about the classes? I opted to receive anything. Um, you should see. Oh, well, I will say this. I've been sending a lot. Check your spam and promo, but I've been sending a lot to um, as an incentive. If people are um, members of the site, if you are a member of the site or if you are. Um, you've purchased anything from me, I send emails because a lot of times um, those people are not just signing up just to get free stuff. So I, I, I do that in an email marketing campaign, but I don't send out a lot of emails. I just don't want to, I don't bother people a lot. So you might get, you know, maybe in a month's time, unless you sign up for a class. Um, I just tell people, I encourage you to go on the site, you know, um, and pay attention to the community because I always post my upcoming classes in the community. And that's to keep from bombarding people with a whole lot of emails. You know, y'all know how it is. People be bombarding you with emails. Yep. I just did a video on that. Um, they are wanting to change the laws and make gig workers, independent contractors obsolete and turn everybody into an employer. Yes. Yep. And that's going to that's gonna definitely happen. Remember, you all, they need a lot of you all to play, pay into the taxes. This is it, It's sick how this is going down, but they need more people paying these businesses, paying payroll taxes. They need you all. They, they want to monitor the money that you're making. They want to monitor any tips that you're getting or what have you. They are really putting the gridlock on folks. <clears throat> Let me go to the bottom. And we've been here 56 minutes. I didn't want to keep y'all long. Stacy says, I appreciate the coupons. You're welcome. Coupon to how are y'all liking coupon Tuesdays? Um, um, I think it's, you know, I, sometimes I just do it for a product, sometimes I do it for all the services, and then I'll do it for all the, the products. It's it's pretty cool. Um it's CEO drive, um, CEO drive her. I'm always gonna be CEO or drive her across them, across the platforms. Absolutely, it's a monopoly. Totally. Ooh, portable TV. Yes. I got to get a DD, DVD player. Uh, let me tell y'all the secret. eBay. eBay, been. let me tell you something, y'all. I've been bidding on books, getting books for $2. Books that would cost $30, $100. Hardbacks, classics. I've been get, eating them up. They're, you'll be surprised what people are selling over there. And they just want to get rid of the inventory. I'm finding really, really good stuff. So the DVD player is next. And I don't want no Blu-ray, if possible. Someone said, if Biden passed that weed law in Florida, he, he's staying in the White House. But no, that's Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Okay, first of all, first of all, that's not true. That is, that is, that is. And it, you know what? And if it is true, it is that will be a very disgusting reflection of us as a people in the United States of America. Okay. A weed law, most weed has been decriminalized in most places. You're gonna get a ticket if you're outside smoking weed. People ain't checking for weed like that. I do not think that weed law, that's not true. People don't care about no weed. People need medical care. People need to be able to pay their bills. People need to buy food at the supermarket, okay? People need to be able to get their kids in camp. People need everyday essentials. They could, they, he could shove that weed bill up his left nostril, all right? We don't care about no weed, and we don't care about no weed heads and a bunch of druggies that want to be able to smoke their weed, okay? Go in your house and smoke your little crack, do your little crackhead stuff in your house, fine. But we're not pressed about no weed. And I'm going to tell you, and that's one thing they start rolling. One thing I don't like, they start rolling out these little, they get you with this stupid stuff. Oh, we're going to give you free weed. We're going to let you buy weed. We're going to let you, it's going to be decriminalized. It's a misdemeanor in the city of Atlanta. As long as you got, le you got less than an ounce, you ain't going to jail. And I'm an officer of 15 years. Trust me, dealt with a lot of, lot of dope, okay? Dealt with a lot of dope, all right? Uh, it's only a felony if it was over a quarter sack anyway. So ain't no one pressed about it. 
but they're gonna come out and they're gonna say, hey, we're gonna give you some free money. We're gonna give you free some some free shekels. We're gonna give you free student. We're gonna pay off your student. They do the same talking points. Black people are literally being out of Chicago, my hometown, Boston, right? There, and you notice they dumping on the illegals in black neighborhoods. Mm. Mm. Oh, where's all the sanctuary cities? It's in the cities that black people don't own. This is our block. We we got we own the hood. It's ironic that you got all these gangsters in Chicago, all these people. You notice they ain't they ain't they ain't touched them one of the immigrants. Some of it, yo, you got to start asking some questions. So black people been killing black people in these communities for the longest time. And now all these immigrants done ran over them. You, you can't even have summer camp and all this stuff because it's being housed. They're allowing for these children. I'm sorry, these immigrants to be housed in the schools. Your veterans, your old people can't even do nothing, whatever. And the cop is being ran, being, you know, laid out for these people. Funding is being laid out for these people in these communities. And now black people are starting to say something. It's ironic. It's ironic. <laughs> I, 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 it's, 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 and I'm gonna be honest. I'm kind of, I am pretty much desensitized. I hate to see it that there's so many people that are, um, being victimized by this. They're being subjected to this. I'm seeing black people screaming at other from the Dalton mayor, um, in Chicago, the outside the suburb, suburb, suburbs of Tiffany Hanyard. Um, that crim oh my goodness, that monster. And then you have Brandon Johnson, um, the, the Chicago mayor, who was just was it pompous and just pretentious and do not care. And you got black people are crying out, like, how can you do this? But you remember, you all let, let me just remind a lot of you all, you called a lot of us black folks coons. We wanted to be white. We wanted to be this. We were aunt your mamas and mammies and all this kind of stuff. You call white people racist for saying, hey, you got mad at Trump when he said they're not sending over their best. Do you not know El Salvador? El Salvador literally released all of their most violent criminals to come into America. Do you know that? And right now you can go and El Salvador just got rated one of the most safest places in the world. You want to know why? Because El Salvador literally released all of their prisoners, most violent, one of which just committed a murder here in Atlanta. Huh. huh. But when Trump said they're not releasing their best, you called him a racist. Mm -hmm. And now the very people who told you to call him a racist, the very people who told you to be mad, the very people who told you to do these things are the very people dumping these people at your front door. Release, the, a man just died of the bubonic, do y'all know what the bubonic plague is? When I was in law enforcement, one of the things that we had to do, and anyone that's in law enforcement, you know this, when you bring someone into the jail, what's the first thing we ask and we test for? You don't know, I'm gonna tell you tuberculosis if they're a foreigner. You, dealing in law enforcement, we had to take certain vaccinations. We had to take certain things, right? Because we're subjected, especially working morning watch. I dealt with people with scabies, okay? I dealt with people with scabies. We dealt with people with gangrene. We dealt with people with diseases you would have never known, especially in certain communities where they they tend to have a lot of immig you know, immigrants. OK, and these people get locked up and what have you. And now we got to house them with other American citizens. We still got to protect our people regardless. They in jail. You still got to protect them. And so it, you exactly. Uh, tuberculosis is contagious. Why? Because this is airborne disease. So you all don't even you're, you don't see how this like when you go into Africa, you got to take certain shots and whatever. You got to make sure you don't get malaria. There's so many different things that you're not conditioned. You've never been in a position to be in that element. So you can eat. You could die. And vice versa, because of the native habitation of plants and, and so forth. So this kind of data matters, you all. So when we're saying, hey, we don't mind people coming here, but there's a there's there's you gotta come through the door. You gotta come right. 
You had you, you black people for the I could not I did not understand how y'all sat on here calling Trump a racist and all this stuff. And because he wanted to build a wall and didn't want Hispanics coming through the border, which we got Afghanistan, we got all kinds of people coming through the south of the border because they're coming through South America and through Central America, and they coming through, and let's just if we're gonna keep it a buck, we know they're coming through the Panama Canal, where a lot of them ships are dropping off stuff in some of those ports, but I digress. They're coming through the border. But you don't you don't bat a, a eye when they come in on boats from Jamaica or Haiti or when the and when they the, you have you have the Senate the most of the presidents they don't mind sending back Africans that come through on a boat they turn them right back around and send them right back to their home country. But white is right, even if it's a little bit tanner. That's how a lot of you all think, and now. It's at your doorstep. Now you're gonna ha- you're gonna have to deal with the cognitive dissonance that you all have. So not only we're we dealing with a digital war, we're dealing with uh we we literally have a cold war going here on right now, but we also have this internal conflict within our own communities and ourselves. Everyone coming through. They're letting Chinese come through, Indians come through, East, you know, Pakistanis, South America. Anyone is coming through. But I always notice they'll take a picture and segregate anyone of a darker skin tone at the border. Mm Mm-hmm. But I'm going to leave it at that. Um, Going back to the TikTok ban, you all do not, do not um allow your cuz I'm talking to my entrepreneurs and even if you all a side hustle you should never ever ever build anything on social media wanting YouTube to pay you Instagram ain't going to pay you Facebook to pay you TikTok to pay you that sh- you should look at it as every time they pay you whether it's $100 or $5000 or $10000 that month you should look at it as your last check from them because it can change it can change in an instant. Okay. So you got to be very careful. You have to build your own IPs, your own intellectual properties, loves. You got to. Okay. You got to, ch- you, you got to build it. Shout out to you all that signed up um, for my print to publish people. We're going to meet again this Sunday. I'll send out the time. It's going to be a later time. I think I'm going to do it like that. Um, 7 p.m. is it won't be a long class, but we're gonna we're gonna go through some of the Sam Card stuff or whatever. So we're gonna reconvene um on Sunday. Excuse me, hold on. Um that's not no, nah, that's not true. Kimberly, I was told by a law enforcement officer that when an illegal commits a crime, they are arrested, they become a citizen. No, 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 no. No, no, no. No, so let me tell you what happens because I used to deal with the consulate and I used to deal with um um, Department of Land Home Security myself, there's a process for that. What happens is they get assigned, if they commit a crime, particularly a felony, but even a misdemeanor, unless it's a non, um, what we call it, a non forcible offense or whatever. So any kind of misdemeanor or any kind of felony, they get assigned a U.S. number. So it's, they're going to get assigned an FBI number, okay? And they're going to get what we call an SID, which is a state ID number, okay? That is tied to their fingerprints. What happens is they get placed in the national database, the national information, NIC, National Information Criminal something. It's been a minute since I've been in it, y'all. But they get placed in this database. Uh, and also, now I know not every place don't do this, but automatically when they got arrested, they automatically, we would send a letter immediately. We will send, um, I used to deal with this directly um, for years. We will send their information to Department of Homeland Security, um, DOL, and then um, they would um, put an ICE detainer. They would put an ICE detainer on them. So a lot of them end up getting an ICE detainer. The thing is, no one does nothing with them, but they are placed in our um, NCIS, NCIC, I'm sorry, NCIC, um, and in Georgia is GCIC database, if that makes sense. But they do not get citizenship if they get arrested. No. No. Now, unless Biden has, but that... That would be a criminal offense in itself. Um, that 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 doesn't happen. 
they just get assigned numbers. And I think people think because they get assigned a number um, that they are a citizen. They're not. Um, so I'll see some of you all tonight. Um, we have the Easy Peasy Canva website class tonight. So that should be a um, good two hours. Okay. We're going to do the lessons and then we're going to do uh, a bunch of practicals. Okay. We're going to go over some of the legalities and things of that sort. Um, I want y'all to have a lot of fun with this and to be able to um, protect your own, right? Protect what it is that you have. This is why I want you all to, um, if you can't afford to have like a Wix or a GoDaddy or whatnot, you want to have some kind of online presence and protect your intellectual properties and be able to navigate people off of some of these platforms, um, you know, my entrepreneurs, so that you can um, still earn. Okay. No T it's not, it's not. I'm about to take my matcha and stuff. I'm a little, baby, I'm a little exhausted. So, um, yeah, I'm a little exhausted. So I don't see that. I, I, I actually did a very, uh Oh, did I rip this? I did a very simplistic format. Um, for the class because I did not want to overwhelm everyone. So, um, it's going to be fun, y'all. It's going to be fun. And uh, I'll talk to you all later. All right. All right. Y'all take care. Be blessed. Stay prayed up. All right. Bye-bye.